to order. Good morning, everyone. It is now 11.03 a.m. calling the roll for the Monday, uh, April 22nd Board of Control meeting. We have Nan Baker, Dale Miller, Here. Trevor McAleer serving as an alternate for Dan Brady, Mike Dever, Here. Matt Carroll serving as an alternate for Armin Budish, Here. Angela Rich serving as an alternate for Dennis Kennedy. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, we have, um, first of all, uh, to look at the minutes from last meeting. Uh, any questions or comments about the minutes? Hearing none, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Yes. Motion and second. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right. Uh, any public comment? No public comment at this time. Okay. Thank you. We're on to uh, contracts and awards. Any tabled items? And no tabled items. All right. Let's go to uh, new items. First item, BC 2019-308, Department of Public Works, submitting an amendment, subsidiary number three, to a contract with Union Industrial Contractors, Inc., for rehabilitation of Highland Road Bridge numbers 00.13, 00.31, and 00.54, and 00.64 over Euclid Creek in the city of Euclid for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $499,605.50. Board from the Department of Public Works, uh, we're requesting approval of an amendment to the Highland Road Bridge Freehab Project. Uh, the project includes rehabilitation of four of our county structures. This proposed amendment includes uh, additional items of work uh, that are as a result of the delays in the start of construction of the project. Uh, this amendment number three increases the contract amount by $499,605.50 and it extends the completion date to October 15, 2020. Uh, most of the items in the amendment are related to the delay of the construction start date um, and also receiving the Corps of Engineers uh, permitting the delay uh, of, for, of construction was approximately six months. Uh, in that period was a uh, time period that required for the contractor to get the Corps of Engineers 404 permit. Uh, the delay impacted costs for escalation of labor and material costs, uh, material storage costs, and home and field office overhead. The, uh, in regards to the Corps of Engineer permitting costs, uh, in order to meet the requirements of the 404 permit, we had to perform additional clearing, excavation, backfilling, and modification to the demolition process of the bridge and uh, protect the stream uh, with uh, the modified procedures. We had additional work that was necessary, not related to the uh, permitting, but uh, when we started uh, construction, one of the structures was found to be in worse condition uh, when the demolition started. And as a result, we had to add steel deck protection to maintain emergency vehicles through the project uh, construction area and to protect construction crews as well. Uh, in addition, we had to prepare an alternate demolition plan to match the requirements of the Corps of Engineers. Uh, and we also added a truck detour route plan. Um, those were the majority of the costs that related to this amendment and we're requesting approval to fund the amendment from the county $7.50 license tax fund. Any questions? Councilman. If you look at all three amendments taken together, the increase in the project over the original contract amount is more than 10 percent and uh, I would be interested in your comment as to uh, to what extent you think these uh, 
increases were entirely unforeseen, or, or do you think that some of these things we could have reasonably foreseen and and uh, and got the original contract amount closer to the final amount? Yeah, I think we discussed that in the initial uh, uh, change order that started on the project, but. Uh, to kind of boil it down, I don't think we could have predicted this. It started with NOACA, and their, um, they informed us that the funding wasn't available at the time that we initially planned on it. So we had the design pretty much complete at that point. Then NOACA said that the funding wasn't available. Uh, we worked with them. They ended up, I think it was a significant time period. I don't recall what that is right now. But uh, that delayed us in actually going out for bids. Um, when NOACA finally uh, found a funding source and we got back on track, the Corps of Engineers permit was coming up for export. Uh, expiring. So uh, when we talked with the Corps of Engineers, they said in order to renew the permit, we want to deal with the contractor. And so we had to get into a contract with the contractor at that point. And then subsequently, it took them six months to give us a, a renewal of that 404 permit. Things have gotten awfully complicated. It's a tough world out there. Yes, it is. Any uh, other questions, Councilwoman? Uh, yes, the um, in these estimates, is there usually a contingency that's built in for unexpected costs? Uh, not in our estimates for uh, highway purposes, no. Okay, so that number is a number that has no wiggle room. Well, uh, there's a series of items that are listed in there that are estimated at this point. There's no contingency listed, but they're estimated. Okay. They could change somewhat, but we think we're fairly close. All right. Thank you. If there are uh, no further questions, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. So motion and second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. Aye. Uh, and aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Next item, please. Next item, DC 2019-309, Department of Public Works, recommending an award on requisition 44249 and enter into a contract with RGT Services, LLC, doing business as the Fowler Company in the amount not to exceed $197,500 for lighting of the Veterans Memorial Bridge number 84. And it's for the period April 22nd, 2019 through April 21st, 2021. Uh, good morning, Tom Pavich, Department of Public Works. Uh, this item we're recommending award to enter into a contract with uh, the Fowler Company. Um, this is for the uh, decorative lighting for the uh, Veterans Memorial Bridge. Um, we bid this out every so years. We did this as a formal bid through OPD. It went to uh, 13 vendors. We had two bid submissions. We're going with the uh, lowest and best bidder. Any questions? Councilman. How much does the cost for the future contract compare with your current cost for the service? I believe it went up a few percentage points. You know, we bid this out every couple of years. We rarely do an amendment on this, so we do a competitive bid. Um, I believe the last contract um, was based on another not to exceed around 197000 um, I would have to get back to you to see what the actual spend was. The way this contract is set up is um, once it's in place, our road and bridge crews, they work with the vendor to set up a quarterly schedule. Um, that quarterly schedule is to, for the vendor to come out, um, do cleaning, replacement of the, uh, the lamps, the decorative lighting, the cleaning of the lenses, replacement of any ballast. So a lot of the cost is built on as, in, as needed. So if the vendor comes out during one quarter, um, the springtime, I'm sure there's a lot more expenditures based on the harshness of our winter, but when they come out for a uh, summer or fall, inspection and uh, maintenance service, um, you know, they're going to spend less. So uh, I believe the estimated dollar amount was, I think we kept it around the same. I think their bid may have been a little bit percentage higher, um, but th this was the lowest bid that we received. The other bid was, 
um, 200, or the, the actual bid that uh, Fowler did was 182,000. The other vendor was 258,000. So. Pretty big difference. A big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second, please? Motion and second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next item, PC 2019-310, Department of Public Works, recommending an award on requisition 44233 to Cornerstone Detention Products, Inc., in the amount not to exceed $87,544 for the purchase of 116 bunk beds and 58 privacy panels in connection with the Jail One kitchen renovation. Good morning, Matt Reimer, representing the Department of Public Works. Uh, this is for outfitting our project on the fourth floor of Jail One facility, the, new two, the two new dormitories that are under construction now. Uh, these beds will make up the uh, sleeping arrangements uh, for the inmates uh, in both uh, dormitories. Uh, the 116 uh, bunk beds are uh, for just that, 116 uh, inmates, and then the privacy screens are for when the bunk beds are set up next to each other. The privacy screen is up between the two sets of uh, bunks. This is a formal uh, bid. Uh, performed uh, late last year and one bid was received. Any questions? Yes. Councilman. How much was the estimated cost? Tom, do you have that information in there? Uh, Tom, Tom Pavich, Public Works. Uh, the initial estimate uh, prior to going out to bid was 99530 uh, So we did come in under um, 12000 less than the estimate. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Got to have it. Move approval. Thank you. Uh, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item, item number BC 2019-311, Department of Public Works, recommending an award on requisition 44973 to Flag Zone LLC in the amount not to exceed $50,803.20 for the purchase and delivery of 840 gross U.S. flags. Uh, good morning, Tom Pavich, uh, Public Works again. Uh, requesting approval of a purchase order this is with Flag Zone. Uh, we do this every year. Uh, this is for the... Um, Flags are going to be used to decorate the grave sites for the Veterans on Memorial Day. Uh, we did this as a formal bid, went to 17 vendors. We got two bids, uh, going with the lowest and best. Um, this is for 840 gross flags. Uh, this year we're paying $60.48. Last year we did pay $61.20, so it's uh, less expensive this year than last year. Any questions? Yes. Councilman. I know we've done this for years. Yes. Uh, have the winning vendor always been the same, or, or have we used different folks? For this? Um, this year was Flag Zone. Last year was Flag Zone. Uh, 2017 was Bridge Associates. 2016 was Metro Flag. 2015 was Flag Zone. So, uh, a five year span, we've had three different vendors. And who was the second bidder on this? Uh, second bidder was Metro Flag. Their cost was more than double. Wow. Yes. And these are U.S. made flags, 8 by 12, 24 inch flags for staff. Okay, thank you. Um, if there are no further questions, like a motion, uh, Councilwoman? Yeah, go ahead. Curious, um, how long do these flags stay posted? The actual bid or the flags in the graves? Um, I am not 100% sure. I can check with our Director of Veterans Affairs. Mm -hmm. um, I know when uh, they do come down, uh, families are able to keep them and take them home. Um, or they are uh, properly recycled through and according to flag protocol. Thank you. I was really more concerned about okay. that. Councilman, I can speak a little bit to that because uh, it was, I think, four years ago is when Public Works took over the bidding. Uh, prior to that, the Veterans Services Commission uh, handled the bidding process, and there was an issue around uh, Boy Scouts wanting to reuse the flags, uh, and the Veterans Services Commissioners did not want to allow for that, and so... Um, Public Works took it over, so they, from my understanding, they're out for about a week, and then, as yep. Tom mentioned, either family members will take it or uh, Boy Scouts and other groups will come and reuse those flags. Yep. If there are no further questions, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Is there a second? There's a motion and second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Tom. 
Next item, BC 2019-312, Department of Public Works, submitting an amendment subsidiary number one to a contract with Global Outdoor Solutions, LLC, doing business as Fortunus Group for the Bridge Box Beam Replacement Program, part one for Abbey Road Bridge number 02.35 over Baldwin Creek in the city of North Royalton and Harris Road Bridge number 01.61 over Chippewa Creek in the city of Broadview Heights to make budget line item revisions, no additional funds required uh, Dave Marquardt from the Department of Public Works uh, again this is a request for approval of an amendment to adjust the final quantities uh, for the uh, box beam project uh, with no change in cost and I'll be glad to answer any questions any questions Trevor Dave, is this to then process the final payment to global outdoor solutions is that why the budget this the isn't line items are no needed? this isn't the final payment yet this is just the final quantities the projects near it's it's nearly complete uh, I think there's some final uh, cleanup stuff that needs to be done because I, I, I know uh, the company reached out to one of the council members just asking uh, an issue of a timely uh, receiving payment uh, in a timely fashion so do you know if this will help with with that yes, payment we, to the vendor? Yeah, we've addressed that. Uh, what we're doing is uh, one of the suppliers has filed a, a lien. Uh, we will place that money in escrow, the, the amount of the lien, when the contractor and, and the supplier get uh, come to an agreement that we will release the money from the, the uh, escrow account. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item, BC 2019-313, Department of Information Technology, submitting a contract, an amendment to a contract with Mainsail LLC for technical professional services in connection with the implementation of the Enterprise Resource Planning System, and is for the period September 17, 2018 through September 16, 2019, for additional funds in the amount not to exceed 470000 Janelle Green, Department of IT. Uh, <clears throat> As Andrea stated, this is uh, an amendment to the main sale contract. They provide uh, staff augmentation uh, directly for um, the ERP project. Um, <clears throat> this is a part of the quarterly uh, reexamination of this particular contract. Um, and we will be uh, looking forward to looking forward to amending this again in the future. Um, these funds, though, were budgeted, so it's not coming out of the contingency. Um, but as the schedule has changed, um, we anticipate there will be a future um, change to the main sale contract as it expires currently, uh, September 16, 2019. Questions? Yes, Councilwoman. The uh, dollar amount is not to exceed uh, 470,000. Do you anticipate that the others will be that high coming out of, because that contingency is not very high anymore? Right. Um, so this particular one is what we budgeted. So um, it could be we actually have a meeting to look at what the resources are and what we will, what our needs will be over um, the rest of this year, um, this afternoon. So we're going to be looking at what what we're looking for as far as it aligns with the schedule of uh, releases of modules of the ERP. Right. Because the, when the contingency is exhausted and it's not part of the twenty five million, then it's we're, we're over budget. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Trevor. No, just to confirm, the, the 470, as you said, was budgeted, but any additional amendments would be use of contingency? Um, actually, uh, what we budgeted for was 1.552 million. Um, we would still be the next amendment, um, this is in theory, would be under budget, but we have to look at the resources. I mean, at this level, at this amount? You're Correct. Saying? And so can I just put sure, up? Sure. what does the 470 take us to then for the total contract? Um, main the 920 plus the 470, that's um, 1.39 million right now. And so far we've uh, actually spent 
um, $744,496.26. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further questions. I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next item is a two-part item, item BC 2019-314, Fiscal Office, on behalf of the County Executive's Office, A, submitting an RFP exemption on Requisition 44978, which will result in a payment to County Commissioners Association of Ohio in the amount not to exceed $13,764 for annual membership dues, and it's for the period January 1st, 2019, through December 31st, 2019, and B, recommending a payment in connection with said RFP exemption. Maggie Keenan, Office of Budget and Management. This is an annual payment that we make to the CCAO. The county's been doing this at least as long as I've been here, so that's 2006. Um, we rely on CCAO for a wealth of information. They help us with lobbying efforts. They help us um, keep track of the state budget legislation that's pending that affects counties, et cetera. Any questions? Councilman. Just on, I'm reading here this, this morning, um, the lateness of this being it is a forever, you know, something <laughs> that we always do to have this be late. I, I, I'm reading through here, I guess I understand, but you don't expect that to happen again. No, and actually I, I would, um, so one issue is the invoice always comes to us after the start of the year. It doesn't come before, so we'll always be a little late because we can't um, start paying until we get the invoice, but the... This was, uh, I mean, I'll take the responsibility for this one, but this one sat. Okay. So it's not an on-base issue. It wasn't a process issue. It oh. just, we needed someone to dog it a little bit more. Okay, I appreciate the mm -hmm. honesty. Thank you. Any other, yes, Trevor. Well, to, just to defend Maggie a little bit, we, for whatever reason, we get sent the invoice county council does, and then I don't know why we've tried to get it changed, but then we always send it to Maggie to take care of it. So we just, I think, sent it to her, I think maybe a month ago. So, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Um, so, but for whatever reason, they send us the invoice, <laughs> and then we, we send it over to Maggie, so. Despite repeated <laughs> efforts yeah, to right. tell them my right. address. <laughs> right. <laughs> there are no further questions. I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? second. Motion and second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. 2019-315 Sheriff's Department submitting an amendment to a contract with Educare Ma uh, Medical Staffing LLP for temporary nursing services and it's for the period September 17, 2018 through December 31st, 2019 for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $300,000. Maggie Keenan, Office of Budget and Management. Um, Donna had a conflict today, so I'm pinch hitting for her. This is something that you all have seen before. It's a contract for temporary nursing services in the county jails. Um, we've been working with this vendor for quite some time now. We anticipate that this will be the last amendment. Um, as you know, we are in the process of transitioning medical services to Metro Health. So we do hope that this is the last one. I can't sit here and say that that's gonna be the case because it just depends on the ADP in the jail, our own nurse staffing levels, you know, we have to respond to that, but we do assume that this will be the last. Any questions? Yes, Trevor. Do you know if we've used up the previous two contracts or do we still have some left and this is just to get us through? Or do we need For Educare? Yeah. The, there are some dollars left on the contract, but they are nearly accounted for. So we have to, we're paying bills there still, and we have invoices that we're expecting will come. You know, there's a little bit of a delay, but it's nearly all accounted for. Thank you. Mm -hmm. if there are no further questions. I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? second. There's a motion and second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Next item, BC 2019-316, Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Children and Family Services, recommending an award on Requisition 44532 and to enter into a contract with the JCPenney Corporation, Inc., in the amount not to exceed $475,000 for emergency clothing assistance services, and it's for the period May 1st, 2019 through April 30th, 2020. Good morning, Bob Nath uh, from Health and Human Service on behalf of DCFS. We are recommending a contract award of J.C. Penney to provide emergency clothing assistance to children in DCFS custody or those children and families that are at risk of becoming involved with DCFS. 
Um, if I can, I'd like to just share with you just a little bit more background surrounding this award. Um, DCFS has contract with providers to offer a range of emergency type services, including furniture, appliances, food and clothing to families and children at risk for many years in order to help stabilize families during times of crisis. In December of 17, we had issued an RFP for emergency services, but there was only one respondent indicating that they could provide clothing. However, they could not take our purchase orders, nor could they ensure that our families who were referred received the items that they really needed. As a result, we approached our current vendor at that time, who did not respond to the RFP, uh, but, we did, but we did approach them and ask them to, if they would agree to an amendment for another year to continue providing clothing services because of, because of that need. Um, so we did, however, go forward with the, with the master contract for furniture, appliances, you know, and food. Our contract with our clothing provider at that time had been amended on numerous occasions in the past. And while that amendment was in force, we thought it best to release another RFP this past January just for clothing. Um, so the RFP was released um, and was sent to a number of potential providers, but this time we only received one response, and that was from J.C. Penney, uh, not from our current provider. Uh, J.C. Penney's resp response met the deliverables in the RFP. Uh, and during our negotiations with them, we were able to agree on the service delivery method and all the other critical aspects to ensure that our children that received, that they received the clothing they needed and could confirm that they did in fact receive the clothing items that were determined to be a need by uh, DCFS social workers. So as a result, we're recommending an award to JCPenney to continue with providing you know, clothing assistance. Any questions? Councilman. Am I correct that our current provider is Burlington Coat Factory? That's correct. And how does the cost per item at JCPenney compare with what we're currently paying at Burlington? Well, uh, Councilman Miller, um, they sent us like a price list, but there's a range, obviously, for clothing for, you know, um, for infants, children, and so on. So there's a price list we work with. Um, DCFS has a kind of a standard formula to determine um, you know, how much money families receive for clothing. Uh, the prices at Burlington and JCPenney upon comparison are pretty similar. And do we have any sense of why Burlington is not bidding on this anymore? Uh, Council Miller, I, we spoke to them. Actually, they called us about a week after the deadline when the RFP closed. Uh, they received the RFP. There was just negligence on their part. Okay, well, they might be back. They could be back. Yeah, it's good to have competition. So this contract is for one year. That's correct. And and then would we plan on bidding it out again? Well, we built into the contract. Um, it's clearly our choice. If we're not satisfied with the with the services. Um, in the RFP, we indicated that uh, there it's a one year contract with option years to renew. Should we choose to amend those contracts? So it's strictly a county choice. And uh, how many option years are there? There's two one-year option years based okay. upon performance, you know, agency priorities and, and funding availability. Tip, typical pattern. Typical pattern, okay, yes. Fine. We, seem that we think that sort of works well. Okay. All right. If there are no, uh, yes, another question. I just have a uh, question on process cost. Could you talk a little bit about when DCFS uh, realizes there's a need for a child or a family, how, how do they go about getting the coats or, or the clothes? Um, well, they do an assessment of the, of the family's needs, you know, determine, uh, you know, winter clothing, you know, whatever type of clothing they need. And then they craft, uh, they develop a purchase order. And uh, the family takes the purchase order to the store. The store fills a purchase order, um, sends us the invoice with the receipt indicating that the, you know, that the family received those items that were on the purchase order. So the family can go directly to the store. That's correct. That's what they If there are no uh, further questions, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Next item, BC 2019-317, Department of Health and Human Services, Community Initiatives Division, Office of Early Childhood, submitting an amendment to a contract with Strategic Resources Consulting, LLC, for faith-based and or community-based organizations, outreach and referral program services for the Universal Pre-Kindergarten 2.0 Initiative. And it's for the period April 1st, 2018 through March 31st, 2019, to extend the time period to July 31st, 2019. No additional funds required. Good morning, Bob Stabe with the Office of Early Childhood. 
So recommending for your approval a no-cost extension of our contract with Strategic Resources, who's been helping us promote the Universal Pre-Kindergarten. And I'd just like to spend a real quick moment telling you about their campaign. Uh, so it began last summer with all of the community events and festivals. They also did 36 UPK Sundays in 36 different churches, primarily in the city of Cleveland, where the, uh, the uh, minister, the pastor, spoke about the importance of high-quality preschool. Uh, and we had give outs including a UPK fan. And I'm sorry, I don't have one to share with you. <laughs> they went like hotcakes. Um, uh, Strategic Resources also did seven weeks of radio, uh, a lot of uh, media on Facebook. They were also, uh, we did door to door. Um, they did door to door with not just leaving the door knocker, but actually knocking on people's doors. I mean, you can't get more grassroots than that. Uh, they were in beauty shops, barber shops, um, and they even were able to provide some one-on-one um, -on -one with some of our UPK providers who were seeking some guidance and assistance. So we have about 8,000 left. We want them to be out again this summer in the community festivals, and uh, while I speak, we're preparing an RFP uh, to go out again to help us identify a contractor to play this role for us next year. Any questions? Councilwoman. Um, so the extension for four months is to try to capture capture the um, summer because it's the highest peak. Is there a reason why we just don't make the contract four months longer in the original time that uh, we uh, – We probably will. So last year – this was the first time out for us last okay. year. So uh, – and we were estimating – you know, trying to estimate time frames and, and the amount of money. I think – we had them put a lot of emphasis on last summer season. Okay. We had a little extra money. So so I think, we, exactly, we'll try to adjust things so that we get the timing a little better. Peaks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. If there are no further questions, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks, Thank Bob. you. All right. I think we've gotten to the end of our uh, scheduled items. Um, we are on to the consent agenda. Yes, item numbers PC 2019, 318 through 320. Any questions about the consent agenda? I would like to make one correction. Yep. And it's on um, page number eight. It's for requisition number 45091 for auto desk design suite and annual subscription services for the Department of Public Works. And the vendor is vCloud Tech Inc. The dollar amount reflected on the agenda is $19,199.33. And we are correcting that dollar amount. It should reflect 18000 yeah, Page nine, Andrea, is that right? Yeah, page, yeah. page eight. Oh, I Right, page nine, anyway. Okay, right, it's page eight. Right. Um, and uh, the dollar amount reflected on the agenda right now is $19,199.33, and it should be $18,199.33. So that's a difference of $1,000. Any, uh, any questions about the consent agenda? All right, Harry. Hearing none, there's a motion to approve. I, I'd like to, there's also a second. Uh, all those in favor of the, of the consent agenda items, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye also, by the way. Thank you. All right, so I believe we have a little bit of other business. All right, we have two mission critical items. Uh, both are from the Department of Public Works. The first mission critical item is uh, Recommending an award to advance door on RQ number 44706 in the amount not to exceed $5,065.62, and it's for repair of Sally Port overhead door at the Juvenile Justice Center. And the funding source is Internal Service Fund General Fund. Uh, good morning, Tom Pavich, Public Works. We're just uh, looking for approval of a mission critical that we authorized some time ago. Uh, this was for the uh, Sally Port, which is the entranceway to the Juvenile Justice Center. Um, the overhead door failed when one of our cars was entering the building, came down on the van. Uh, so we had to get that taken care of very quickly. So there's no uh, additional access to the building. Uh, we did throw some by speed for a couple hours. We had one response, uh, but the vendor came out. We had to use a tow motor to lift the door, got the car out, which was fine, um, and do a full repair on the actual door. So it was back to operating. 
like to make a motion to amend the agenda to include this item. Is there a second? There's a motion and second to amend. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the agenda has been amended. Any uh, any questions? Trevor. Tom, just uh, curious of when the repair happened. When was it? I believe it was in February. We had to, I mean, typically with Mission Crows, we wait until we get the final invoice. Um, you know, some time ago we've experienced when we do an immediate walk-on and then we have to go back if the invoice changes. Um, you know, if we did the invoice, I think the initial estimate was actually a, a few dollars less than the actual final invoice once it got in. So, you know, we usually wait to get the final invoice. Everything's back up and operating. This is not just for doors, but even vehicles or any other mission criticals that we authorize. We wait until we get that final invoice. And uh, just was there uh, something that caused the door to fail? Or? Uh, from my understanding, you know, I'm not in the actual business, but some of the bearings and springs failed. I think over time, the door just they eventually wear out caused it to come down and the actual bar that goes across ended up breaking, so that whole thing had to be replaced. So, thank you. Councilwoman. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the new doors, they have it where there's that safety protection where it only come down so far. Correct. If there's a, if it breaks, did that have this or was that installed or? I don't know. I, I, can, I can check and get back to you on that. And uh, just to follow, is the um, 5,000 was for a repair what is what did a door usually go for? I'm sure it was an older door. What, what would it be to replace? Well, the door is old as the building, and I mean the juvenile justice center is not that old of a door. Um, I mean typical doors, and this is a large sally port door, so we have to have large vehicles going in and out. It's not your standard garage door. Um, it's a heavy duty because it is a jail facility, so you know it can't be penetratable. So um, you know I, I could verify, but you know I'm guessing these can run twenty, yeah. twenty thousand. All right, and if you can also check to see if the safety feature is part of the repair. I will. Thanks. All right, if there are no further questions, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? There's a motion and second. All those in favor of the uh, item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We have one more. Yes, the next mission critical item is for uh, requisition number 45585, recommending an award. Um, in the amount of $2,500 not to exceed to PSX Inc. for repair of card reader at the Huntington Park Garage and you don't have a funding source. Um, Tom Pavage, Department of Public Works. So this item, uh, we're looking for approval of this uh, mission critical. This is for the repair of the East End monthly card reader. Um, it was damaged by a hotel guest. Um, we had to get a vendor out there to repair as soon as possible because I believe at that end of the building it was the only monthly card reader at the Huntington Park Garage. Um, from my understanding, the uh, guest uh, is going to be paying for the actual reader to be fixed. I'd like to move to uh, amend the agenda to include this item. Is there a second? Second. So motion and second to amend. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any questions about the uh, item? I don't want to say yes or no. <laughs> um, it, it was the damage was done by a guest, and you know we did get uh, the deputies involved, law department was involved, and uh, we did uh, track down the guest, and uh, they have worked something out where they are paying for the repair. So um, I don't want to answer on how someone thinks, but it was damage that was done by a guest, and I know our law department was involved and deputies. So okay, we'll just. Make the assumption from there. Okay. When was that? Uh, Tom? Mike, do you by chance know? Yeah, okay. it was within the past few. I just found out about this late Friday, so. Okay. All right, any other questions? Hearing none, I'd like to move to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 All right, hearing none. Thank you, Thank Tom. You. Um, any last uh, words, public comment? No public comment at this time. All right. I'd like to uh, make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you.